In the last video we saw how we can measure an association and I showed you how um, number of cases is irrelevant for that. It was relevant for um, chi square and in the end there was also a warning showing that we don't have enough expected values to apply chi square in a meaningful way. And I promise that I will show you this time how to overcome such situation. And that's what we are doing. Um, I will introduce to you the Fisher's exact test, which is an alternative to the chi square test, which can be used in situations where you don't have enough number of cases and where you have too little expected values. And again, we start with the Ember um, data set that we have here. So is about settlements and burials with amber finds and without amber finds. And we did the chi square test also on that data set. So um, I just repeat that chi square of amber chi square test. And I don't want to correct the values. I want to have the plain chi square value. And I put it that into the variable t we look to the structure of this variable. We did that before and we saw that we have uh, the chi square statistics up here, which we can extract from that. But there are other things that we can extract, for example, the p-value, the observed values, that's what we have put in, but also the expected values. You can see here that these are the expected values from the chi square method. I explained that in the chi square test. So let's have a look at t expected. We can see that all of them are safely above 5. Well, the settlement without amber, this is ex exactly uh, actually rather near to 5. So what happens if we reduce the number of cases? So let's take this here and directly get the expected values. So it's the same. But now we divide the she's uh, the amber um, data set by two halving the number of cases that we have i get this warning message here the she square approximation may be incorrect and you can see that we have now um, number of cases or expected values below three uh, below five so it's 3.72 and that's a situation when the she square test algorithm throw a warning we can look into the uh, implementation and you can see down here there is a line if any of the expected values is below 5 then we get this warning message here so that's nice of the chi square test algorithm that already gives us this warning but we have to handle that so let's also try that out with even less cases so if we only have 5 uh, divide that by 5. Remember it was 200 originally, so now it's 40 cases and um, then it's also invalid for the chi squared has just because of the number of cases because you can apply the chi squared only if you have 50 uh, number of cases or more. So um, when you have such a situation we need to use another test and that's the Fisher exact test. So we have here again the four by the two by two situation that we have before and that we have also in the amber case and the, uh, the Fisher test now formula wise is calculated like that. We take the sum of the rows and the columns and take the faculty of that and divide that by number of cases total faculty times A faculty times B faculty times C faculty times D faculty. I'm not too sure if faculty is actually the right English term for that. The R command is factorial. And if I make a factorial of 1, I get back 1 factorial of 2, 
is two, that's nice, factorial of three is six, because it takes the number that we have, so factorial of one equals two, one. Factorial of two equals two, one times two, it's the same. Factorial of three equals two, one times two times three. So we have the same and so on and so forth. And you can imagine that when this number gets higher, the resulting number gets very soon quite high. So for example, if we take the sum of amber, which is this n here, and if you calculate the factorial here, I already get an infinite number out of that because, yeah, 200 factorial too big that the computer can compute that in a way. So this is the implementation of Fisher's exact test, how we can do that with a calculator um, and rather low numbers. You can also calculate the Fisher test here in R, but internally it's uh, implemented in another way so that it's still possible to um, use that also for larger data sets, but they should not be too large. Okay, um, let's try that out in code, and it's actually rather simple. The command is fisher.test. If I just put amber in here, I get a result which gives us a p-value, showing that the distribution is significantly uh, different from an random distribution and I can also apply that for the situation where we divide that by 2. The number of cases you can see that the p-value is higher compared to before because we have lesser number of cases we can less be sure sure less, less certain that um, the pattern is not by chance but still it's significant here and even if I divide the number of cases by 5, um, then I still have a significant result. You can see a warning here, because uh, if I divide amber by 5, I get um, round and broken numbers here, so uh, double numbers, and that's the warning here that it was rounded. We can do that ourselves if we round the result of this division here resulting in this structure and then the one disappears but the result is the same. So whenever any of the um, expected values is below 5, the chi square test will inform you about that. Also when the total number of cases is below 50, um, you should apply the Fisher test instead of the chi square test. There are other alternatives for such situation, for example, the Barnard's test, but for most of the situations, the Fisher test might be a good drop in for the chi square test in situations where the number of cases is too low to apply the chi square test as such. Okay, that's the last non parametric test that we talked about here. Next time, I will introduce to you a parametric test um, and very specifically the t-test and all the test statistics that has to be done before applying a t-test.